It's time for Fan Friday, but not really. We're going to the snow dogs. So, for those of you that don't follow us over at youtube.com slash snowdogsvlogs, you should be. Currently, while you guys are watching this video, we're actually camping with the dogs. We're actually camping with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dogs. So if you want to see a bunch of that adventure, you should check out youtube.com slash snowdogsvlogs. And also go down in the video description below and check out all of our social media sites because hopefully we'll have enough internet to be able to at least post photos, Twitters, Twitters? <laughs> Tweets, Instagram, Snapchats, all of those fun things while we're camping. So today, instead of doing a typical Fan Friday, I'm actually going to answer a question that a lot of you have asked in the past and we've never actually done a full video on. Today we're going to show you what we keep in our doggy first aid kit. So we recently put together a new doggy first aid kit and I thought I would share with you guys what we put in our doggy first aid kit. First thing we have, we go camping a lot so this is extremely important. This is called a Tick Twister. It has instructions on the back. I actually got this at my vet's office and it's used for removing ticks from your pets if they get them. We hope, you can do, remove them from yourself too, we hope that we never get them, but in case we do, this is one of the easiest and safest ways to remove ticks from your pets. So we have a tick twister. Next thing we have, we actually have a eye and ear dropper. Um, these can be used for a lot of different things, including like if you need to get a little bit of medicine onto a cut, like you can actually suck it up in the eye dropper. You can use it for using eye medicine. I have eye medicine as well, but it's always a good thing to have just in case you need it. You never know, you might need it. Nail clippers, doggy nail clippers. These are good in case they crack a nail or break a nail, um, or if you just need to clip your, their nails while you're camping. Always have doggy nail clippers. Tweezers, these are brand new, I haven't even opened them yet. You never know when you're gonna need them. You might need them to pull things out of their feet, bur burrs out of their fur. You need like, you can use tweezers to get uh, like little pokey things out of them. You never know when you're gonna need them. And yes, a lot of the stuff in this first aid kit can also be used for people. Hydrogen peroxide, now before you even ever use something like this, talk to your vet and ask them how to correctly use it. This can be used if your dog ingests something that they shouldn't have. You can actually use peroxide to make them vomit quite quickly. So say you're at the campground and somebody leaves a Hershey's bar out because you're eating s'mores and your dog decides to eat the rest of the Hershey bars, which could considerably be a lot of chocolate for one dog depending on the size. This can help them to throw it back up which means it won't go through their body. So you always want to keep this around and keep it handy, but again, contact your vet before, before you go camping so you know how to use it correctly. Another good thing to have that I don't actually have in my box, I have in my camper, is a copy of all of your dog's health records, their vaccination certificate, any current medications that they're on when you go, wherever you go somewhere, make sure you know all those things. And wherever you end up going to travel, if you're taking your kit traveling, have the local vet's phone numbers in your kit. Those are another good thing. I have them all in my camper. Antiseptic spray. If they cut themselves or step on something, this just helps. If you can put it on like minor cuts and scrapes. It's supposed to help uh, to stop like it being from aggravated and help like cool it off. So I keep, and this is actually for dogs. I got this at Meyer. Ear cleaning pads, because you just never know when somebody's gonna decide to dig like crazy and need to have their ears cleaned out. You wanna make sure they don't have anything crazy stuck in them or dirt down in them, so ear cleaning pads are always a good idea. Allergy relief. Again, another product. Make sure you talk to your vet so you know how to give this to your dog properly before you end up actually having to give it to your dog. But this can be used if your dog gets stung by a bee or they have something where they start swelling and have an allergic reaction. Uh, Benadryl can actually help take the swelling down. Memphis and Shelby have both been stung by bees before and this is actually all we ended up giving them. Um, the other thing this can be used for but you don't always have to use for is if you have a dog with high anxiety and you need to like calm them down, sometimes the Benadryl will help calm them down. Again, talk to your vet before giving this to your dog. Speaking of calming things, I actually keep calming chews in my kit, again, because this stays in my camper. And I usually give these to the dogs. They're for stress and anxiety, and I usually give them to the dogs when we leave if the car ride's gonna be really long, like if it's a six hour car ride, I usually give it to them for the longer car rides. When we're actually at, at camp, I don't really give it to them that often because they usually do pretty good at camp, but it just kind of de-stresses them for the long ride. Oakley's like, I know what those are. Self-adhering bandage wrap because you never know when you're gonna need it. 
instant cold packs. These are nice if one of your dogs gets hurt, falls, maybe has you know a hurt paw or a hurt shoulder. It's good to have the instant cold packs. It's also good to have heat packs as well, just in case we actually have an electric blanket that we use. Rolled gauze, you know, they can cut themselves. And if they cut themselves, you're gonna need gauze and then you're gonna need the waterproof tape to hold the gauze on. You're hoping that these things never happen, but they can. And if you're a little bit further away from a vet, you'll be happy you had some of this stuff. Another good idea is to have a splint. In my camper, we actually have a couple different pieces of wood. Um, in case they break a leg and you need to hold their legs straight, you can use the splint and then you can wrap the tape around so that they're not trying to move it. Again, hopefully something you'll never need. Cotton balls, because if they cut themselves, you might need it. Wound cream, if they get a minor wound, like a superficial wound, if they just scrape something, this wound cream is kind of like, it's kind of like Neosporin, kind of like triple antibiotic ointment. Um, I actually have triple antibiotic ointment as well, but wound cream is another good thing to have. A thermometer, because you can check your dog's temperature, because you just never know when you might need it. This is actually a solar thermometer, so I don't ever have to worry about the batteries going dead, which is really nice. Again, I haven't opened it. The other thing you probably want to have, because with a thermometer, you do have to take a dog's temperature rectally with this type of thermometer, have some Vaseline petroleum jelly in case you do have to do that. We have some, it's in our camper. Styptic powder, I don't actually know how you say it. Styptic powder, stop bleeding powder. You can buy this pretty much at any pet store. This is great if you cut their nails too close, you can put this on there and it'll stop the bleeding immediately. Um, don't use it on large cuts. Again, talk to your vet so you can learn more how, about how to use this correctly. Don't use it on large cuts, but if they have a small cut that just won't stop bleeding, this will help coagulate the blood and make it stop bleeding. Mainly used on nails when you cut nails too close. OptiClear, this is basically eye wash for dogs. If they get something in their eye, like if they were to get dirt or something in their eye, you can actually use this to flush it out. Or if they have like a scratch in their eye, say they got dirt in their eye and you got it out but it scratched their eye, this will help with the irritation in their eye. Rounded tip scissors, see? Rounded tip scissors. You can use them for like cutting the bandages and stuff or if they have like sticky stuff stuck in their fur and you've got to cut a chunk of their fur out, don't think it won't happen because sap is sticky and can get in dog's fur and cause knots. This will make it so you can cut those out if you need to without poking your dog. I told you, I had triple antibiotic ointment. We also keep a couple of washcloths in here, just in case. You can use them for different things. You can use them if, if for some reason, if they get cut and you need to, you can wrap these around their legs as well. But we keep them in there just in case we need them. A bag of small treats, very good thing to have. If your dog gets hurt, they may get upset and agitated. And if you can positively reward them with food, you may be thankful you have treats in your first aid kit. We also have a little syringe. This is not a needle syringe. This is for administering medicine if we need to, or maybe getting water or something that we need to. Can be used for cleaning out wounds. If they have a wound and it's dirty, you can actually fill this with a little bit of water and flush out a wound if you need to. Now the rest of the stuff in this kit is something that you guys also asked about, and this is the stuff we have for emergency bloat cases. The first thing I have, again, talk to your vet before you use this, it's called Phazeme. Um, I talked to a lot of people who have pets who have bloated and this has been a lifesaver for many of them. This relieves gas, so if your dog starts to bloat, you can give your dog, again, talk to your vet. Like for Oakley size, we would have to give her two and it will help break up the bubbles in their belly. If their stomach is already twisted, this isn't gonna do anything. If you do end up giving these to your dog, on, when you get to the vet, if your dog is bloating, make sure you tell your vet that you gave these to your dog. The last thing is what you guys asked the most about in the past week or so because of Oakley and her bloating. This has been drooled on by Oakley because she thinks there's food in that box, is our bloat kit. I'm gonna open it up and show you what's in it because the dogs all think it's food because it's plastic. But this is actually our bloat kit. We got it from this place, Paravet, and we bought the um, deluxe bloat kit. It comes with a book that actually gives you instructions on how to use everything in here. Again, if you have a dog that's prone to bloat or has bloated before, talk to your vet. They will explain to you how to use this properly. This book will help as well. So the first thing it has is a tube. If your dog is bloating, you have to get this tube down into their stomach to get the gas and the air out of their stomach. But to do that, you need a bite block. See how this has a hole in it? That's because if you try to put this down your dog's throat, they're gonna bite on it and close it shut. So what you do is you put the bite block in, then put the tube in and try to get it down the dog's throat, which isn't easy, but can save your dog's life if you need it to. It also comes with a um, 
irrigation syringe. This again, that's so you can put medicine down in that tube if you need to. It comes with doggy enzymes, probiotics. This is supposed to help break up air bubbles inside the dog. And it comes with bloat blaster, which is a lot like the phasing pills that I showed you guys. It is supposed to take large pockets of gas and break them down. So that is what our bloat kit actually is. Hopefully we will never ever have to use it, but we have seen it used before. When Oakley bloated when we were on Drummond Island, that's exactly what the vet there used. He put the bite block in Oakley's mouth, put the tube down her throat, the Vaseline, you put a little bit of Vaseline or something on the end to make it slide a little bit easier. Um, like a lubrication, and he put it down in her throat. Jamie held her front end along with the vet. I held her back end and I lifted up and the air came out the tube, which um, the last time when that happened, that was last year, we believe that that vet actually saved her life. If we wouldn't have been able to get the air out of her, it was over an hour and 15 minutes to the emergency vet. So being able to know how to use this in an emergency situation, if you're far away from an emergency vet, it really could save your dog's life. All right, you guys, well, there you go. That is what we have in our personal first aid kit for the dogs. Again, I have other things in the camper as well, but that's like the basic doggy first aid kit. You can buy pre-made first aid kits um, already made, but I kind of like to have my own because then I know what's in it and I know what I've bought and I know what we have. So we hope you guys enjoyed this video. Sorry, it's a little bit different for Fan Friday. Um, regular Fan Friday will return next week so, but I'll pull questions from last week. Well, actually, if you have a question for next week's Fran Friday, uh, leave it down in the comments below using the hashtag AskGTTSD. You got the fly, he's not on you, I swear. He's not on you, I swear. Uh, and hopefully we'll be able to answer him next week. And again, if you wanna see the camping videos, youtube.com slash snowdogsvlogs, all of our social sites listed down in the video description below. Go follow us. Maybe we've already posted some cool pictures of the dogs at waterfalls and things like that that you can go see. Spirit Hoods affiliate link also down in the video description below. All right, you guys, if you're new to this channel and you like what you saw, hopefully you learned something today as well. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, like this video, and share it with your friends to help us grow the audience. As always, you guys, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Stay positive, dream big, and we will see you again soon. We're camping for six days. This is the longest all three of the dogs will have ever gone camping. And today, while you guys are watching this, we're actually camping. We're, we're still camping for three more days past this.